In this episode, we're going to take a look at displaying a price history chart for a selected cryptocurrency. A quick preview of something we can build is this here, where you select the cryptocurrency, it'll display a chart, and then you have the option of changing what range of data you would like. This first video, we're going to focus on being able to select a cryptocurrency and having the chart show up. In the next video, we're going to focus on this dropdown. So let's get started. We already have the functionality for selecting the different cryptocurrencies. So all we have to do is make another request to get historical data and figure out how to display that in a chart. There is this package chart.js, which will make this pretty easy for us. And there is a wrapper to this called react chart.js2, which we are going to use. So we'll just need to install chart.js and react chart.js2. So let's head over into our code and in the terminal, we will say npm install chart.js and react-chartjs-2. Now there are good usage examples with React Chart.js. So if you go to their examples page, we're going to be using a line chart and they will have some code that you can import and a quick example, which looks very similar to what we are trying to do. So we will copy over these imports and then they have these options here. These will describe general things such as what shows up here and where the legend should be, etc. Then we have the labels. This is what shows up down here. For our use case, this is going to be replaced with dates or times. And scrolling down some more, we have this data sets. This is where we actually pass in the data. They're displaying two lines here, but the actual data will be passed in to this data property. Here they're using some fake data. For us, we are going to pass in the cryptocurrency prices at those times. Then what we'll do is we'll just use state for this data and for these options so changing any of the values will re-render the content on the page so let's first grab all of these imports so everything from here up so copy that and we will bring that over into our code we're not going to use the fake data so we can just remove that and we can remove any other unneeded imports now we're going to have two new state variables so const data that's what is going to be passed in for creating the line and set data. And then we'll have const options and set options. So we created some new state, but what type are they? If we're using TypeScript, we want to take advantage of any static typing we can get. And fortunately, Chart.js does have some TypeScript support. If you're watching this video for the charts and you're not using TypeScript, that's fine. You can follow along still. You just won't need to do this part. So actually, it's React Chart.js 2 that has some TypeScript types we can import. So we will take this line here. So import type chart data and chart options from chart.js. This will allow us to type each one of our state variables. So we'll go back over into our code and we will import that here. And now we can define the types for our state. So we'll use angle brackets. This is going to be of type chart data and this one will be of type chart options. Now, one thing you'll notice is that these are actually generic types where you're going to pass in a value inside of these angle brackets for that type. So we're actually going to have two sets of angle brackets. So we'll have chart data and then less than greater than, and we will pass in line, which is the type of chart that we want to display. Similarly, we're going to do the same thing for chart options passing in line. You can modify these for whatever chart type you're trying to display here, but line is good for us and what we'll do now is go down and try to render a line chart so we'll just say line options being options and data being data it's that simple but one thing we have to do is say hey if data does not have a value don't display this at all because then we don't actually have anything to display so what we'll do is we'll say data then display that otherwise no and we also run this entire thing inside of curly braces, like so. So data is going to be filled in from a request to an API, whereas options, we're just going to hard code those by putting them as a default value here. So going up to our state, we can pass in an object here, and this is where we can define our default options. So going off of this code again, we will copy these options here that they recommend, and we will bring that over 
and paste that inside of our options. Now what we need to do is when we select a dropdown value, which is going to be here on change, we will make a new request and then update the data state, which will cause the value down here to render. So what we'll do is we'll say axios.get pass in some URL here, which we'll go grab one in a second, dot then. This will have the response. And then in here we will set data. Like always, I just like to check my sanity, make sure things are wired up correctly by doing a console log. I don't know why I'm commenting that, okay? And we will just say getting crypto prices. So for the API, we're going to use CoinGecko again, and there is one endpoint in here to get the historical data for a cryptocurrency, and that is market chart. Get historical market data includes price, market cap, and 24-hour volume within a range of timestamp. So let's try this one out. What we will need to do is we will need to pass in the cryptocurrency ID, such as Bitcoin, compare this to some existing currency such as USD. This one is going to take a from date Unix timestamp and a to date Unix timestamp. The alternative one, just this market chart without the range, is actually going to allow us to pass in just a number of days. So that's what we will try. Bitcoin, USD, and then for the days, let's go ahead and put 30. Now the interval you can pass that in as well. So for example, we could say daily to get one value per day. Hit execute. Take a look at the data that we get. So it looks like there is a timestamp and then some price. So we can use the timestamp to show where this should display on the line chart and then the value to show how high it should be. So this will be the X axis, this will be the Y axis. And then we'll just convert this timestamp to something that's not so ugly. So let's copy this URL here and we'll bring that over to our application paste that right here and then let's go ahead and console log response.data which I guess works instead of just printing this random thing here so let's try that out we'll go over to our site we'll select some cryptocurrency and we get an array of 31 which includes one extra day you can reduce that if you want by getting rid of one or 31 is fine for me so we have a bunch of arrays and each array has two values. So pretty much what we need to do is get all of these first values for the timestamps and then all of these second values for the actual data. But now that we have this data, we can start creating that data object that we need to pass in. So let's take a look at their example to get that structure. So I'm gonna copy this object and we're only going to have one data set. You could do multiple line charts if you want. I'll just delete one, no big deal. We'll say set data, and we're going to pass in that object. You can see some issues, so let's go ahead and fix these. The labels are going to be the timestamps, what shows up on the bottom, and then the data is going to be the actual values. And we're only going to need one of these lines, so we'll get rid of one. And now we just need to assign something to labels. Just as a quick example, let's do like one, two, three, four. And then for the actual data, we will also try it out. We'll say data and we'll create another array, four, seven, 10, and three. And I'll add my comma there, make sure everything looks good. And let's just test this out to see if we can get a line chart to show up. So I'll select a cryptocurrency and we do in fact get a line which follows that data. So I got one, two, three, four and then four, seven, 10, and three. So before we go in and get all this data, I want to just resize this a bit to make it look a little bit uh, more reasonable. So what we can do is surround this in a div and then give the div a width. So earlier on in the series, we've used Tailwind for everything, but I haven't actually installed that for this application. So we're just going to do a basic style here with 600. There is also some support to pass in sizing as props to the line, but I found this to work easier for me and it looks pretty good. Whenever you want to go through an array and grab one element from a bunch of the nested data, 
that's where you might want to use map, which we've used for looping through content. The parameter is going to be assigned each individual item in that array for each iteration. What we can do then is just grab the individual items in the array. So what is that code going to look like? We're going to jump in to where we have the labels and just say response.data dot map now before we say map this is a function on an array so we need to check the data because it's actually an object where we have the prices so instead of doing map directly we need to say prices dot map and then inside of here we will pass a function and the parameter is going to be an individual price and the type of this is going to be a number array and then all we'll do for here is just say return price index and we want to grab the label which will be the timestamp so taking a look back at the data the timestamp is on the left here so index 0 and then the price is index 1 so we will say price index 0 to grab the timestamp we're going to do something very similar for the data down here so we'll say response.data.prices.map and same exact structure we will have a price which is a an array of numbers and we will say return price index one so let's save and take a look at what we get we will select some cryptocurrency aha it seems to be working so we get the cryptocurrency price we actually i'm like what is going on well, these prices are whack but I realized we hard-coded Bitcoin in the URL, so sorry, there's a bunch going on here. So what we need to do is we need to substitute this value. So we will just say whatever the crypto price we are trying to select, and I will use backtick so I can easily substitute a value in here. What crypto are we trying to select? Well, it is C.ID, and this should allow us to change which cryptocurrency is being selected. So let's try it now. We can go in here and choose a cryptocurrency. And those prices are a bit more reasonable. So far, not so bad, but we might want to update the timestamp values to be more readable dates. And you can do this various ways. You could try converting it to a date object. I'm going to use Moment, which is a package we can easily install and use to make nice formatted dates. So to get Moment, we're going to say npm install Moment. Once this is installed, we can import it. So let's go up to the top and we'll say import moment from moment. Now to use moment, what we'll do is we'll go to where we are getting those date values. So this here, and instead of just returning the timestamp, we can actually convert it here. To convert it, we will say return moment.unix. And this is a method call where we will pass in the price and then dot format will allow us to specify what format we want this to look like so for example we could say month month dash date date meaning a two digit month such as 06 and a two digit date like 13 all right so we'll save this and taking a look it's going to be closer to what we want yeah it's actually looking pretty good but you will probably be confused by these dates because look at these there's no consistency or pattern here it doesn't look like this is a daily chart and this has to do with the way javascript uses timestamps so this value that we are using for the price has the millisecond whereas the unix timestamp expected for moment does not so what we'll need to do is just divide this number by a thousand and now the dates are a little bit more predictable Let's go ahead and select a new cryptocurrency to refresh the chart. So 917, 916, 915, and so forth. If you displayed the year, that would have showed up a little bit clearer. So for example, if we had year, 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 and we did not have this division by a thousand, you would see dates that look like this, which is definitely not right. So definitely make sure you remember to do the division by a thousand. And there you go. That's all we're going to do in this episode. In the next video, we're going to talk about how we can change how much data to be displayed so we could switch it to seven days or even one day and cause a refresh on that chart. We also talk about the chart options and how we can change the title to show what cryptocurrency is being displayed in the chart. 
So stay tuned for the next video. It should be pretty cool. And be sure to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.